Multi-step equations, a little bit tougher than the easier stuff. This might be getting to the point now where you haven't seen this material before. I'm sure you've all solved easier equations. Now this is new. Challenging requires a lot of practice. Um, so yes, uh, your goal is to find x in harder problems. Charlie, while looking keen, is still snoring, as I'm sure you are not. You're actively engaged. Okay, so first of all, first question we're going to do is going to involve two things, which are new. Um, relatively new. One is collecting like terms. You've done it before, just maybe not with solving equations. And uh, the second thing is checking solutions. We'll worry about the checking solution until we're done because you need a solution to check. So what we're doing here, looking at the step here, step one, collect like terms. So what I need to do is bring all the x's to the left side of the equation and all the just numbers to the right side of the equation. Okay, so what I've done is um, I subtract, see this 2x over here, I need to get it over to the left hand side of the equation. So I subtract it from both sides. That's why it's minus 2x here and that's why it's minus 2x there. Okay, then I just write it a little more neatly. So I have 4x, uh, not neatly, but collecting the terms. So I have 4x minus 2x together. Okay, 4x minus 2x is just 2x. So that's where this 2x came from. The minus 7 hasn't changed and the 11 hasn't changed. The next step though is I got to get this minus 7 to like the just numbers all go to the right side of the equation. So because it's minus I'll use opposite operation and I'll add it. That's why it's added right here and I add it to both sides of the equation. That leaves me with 2x on the left hand side because minus 7 plus 7 is 0 and 18 over here. So 2x equals 18 Last step, divide both sides by 2, because that's what's multiplied by x, and I end up with x equals 9. Okay, so there's my so that's my solution. Uh, this next thing is a step that you should know. It uh, comes up sort of frequently throughout your high school career, um, and it's checking your solution. And the idea with checking your solution is, uh, I'm just going to put this up because I don't want you to get distracted by the numbers yet. Checking the solution, what you do is you take our solution, which is x equals 9, and you take your original equation, the left-hand side of the equation and the right-hand side, and on just the left-hand side, you'd sub in x equals 9 and you see what you get. You do the same thing kind of separately on the right-hand side with what's on the right. And then if they both work out to the same number, then you know your solution is correct. Okay, so let's see it happen here and how it works. So I make a little table and I have left hand side, LHS for left hand side, RHS for right hand side, and I write the original. What I mean by the original is the left hand side of the equation from here is 4x minus 7 and the right hand side equation is 2x plus 11. So that's what this is. Okay? The brackets um, don't mean anything. The fact that there's a bracket there, there's not a bracket there. I could have brackets on both or brackets on either, it doesn't matter. Okay, it doesn't mean anything. So, coming down I sub in, like I say, on the left hand side I sub in, instead of x I put 9 and instead of x I put 9 over here. So these equations are sort of operating, both sides of this table are operating on their own here. I'm just subbing in and solving. That leads to 4 times 9 is 36 minus 7 over here and 2 times 9 is 18 plus 11 over here and I end up with 29 on both sides. So say I had ended up with, uh, made some sort of mistake and I ended up with 23 here. Well, it could mean that I made a mistake in, in the checking, but if I did everything right on the checking, it means that my solution was incorrect. So the checking is a good strategy to, to make sure, you know, on your test day, if you have time, well, sometimes I ask you to check the solution, I look for the, for the check specifically. But even if I don't ask, it's pretty smart to actually just do it if you have time. Check it on your own, and then you know when you walk out the door that you got the answer correct, right? Okay, moving on. Let's pull this up so we don't get too far ahead of ourselves. So, first of all, another similar question. This time it's not asking us to check the solution. We're just going to go through the, the, the algebra part, the solving. And we want to get uh, m by itself, right? And so the first thing to do, of course, is try to bring all the m terms over to the left and all the just number terms over to the right. And so the first one I do, as I said here, opposite operation. See, that's minus 4m. So I have to add 4m to both sides, okay? Add 4m, add 4m. Again, I do that so that I can get rid of this over here. Minus 4m plus 4m is just 0. So coming down, my uh, m's 
are all gone over here on the right. And now I subtract, I have a subtract 6, so I add 6 to both sides of my equation. Okay, so first I got the m's over to the left. Now I get the rest of the numbers over to the right. And that leads me with uh, 6m equals 18. Get m by itself means I have to divide both sides by 6. And I end up with m equals 3. Okay, I'd like to remind you, I always want to remind you that if I go fast through these solutions, I have everything written, you don't, that it's okay to pause it, get the writing, and then just, and then turn the video back on. Okay, um, this one is tough. It's a whole extra thing, and it's um, using solving an equation where you have the distributive law. And it's just steps. You know, the rules stay the same, it's just following more steps. And the first step we have to follow is getting rid of the brackets. So what I did here is I multi distributed the 5 through, so 5 times y, so this 5y is here. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15, right here. Um, to get rid of this bracket, I had to change the sign of everything in the middle. We've done that before, so that becomes minus y and plus 2. The, the y becomes negative and the 2 becomes positive when I get rid of the brackets. Nothing changes over here. Okay, so I've eliminated my brackets and now I'm going to collect the terms by bringing, um, sort of bringing everything together. So the 5y, just so you can see where I'm going here. Um, 5y, this minus y goes there. Okay, so this is a minus because it's a minus in front of it, uh, in front of the y or later on in the expression. So the, the sign that goes in front of a term is does never changes. When you move the expression around, you collect the like terms, the sign stays the same. This is minus 15 because it's a minus right here. So this minus ends up here. Okay? Um, this is plus 2 because this 2 is plus 2. Okay? Um, just that kind of leaves me with the things almost as collected as I can where 4y and minus 15 plus 2 is minus 13 um, equals 19. So now i got to get the minus 13 over to the other side of the equation because I want all the numbers over on the right. So I add 13 to both sides. And then I end up with 4y equals 32. And divide both sides by 4 and y equals 8. Okay, So you can see that even though, I mean, we're putting things together, it's getting tougher, but the questions are getting bigger, and it, there's lots of rooms for little errors, and that does happen, but that's what's happening. Okay, here comes the, uh, the big one for today. Solving for x, uh, we have lots of uh, brackets to get rid of. So that's the first step. Um, as you can see here, what I've done is I've distributed the 3 through. So 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times plus 4 is plus 12. Um, remember when I just get rid of these brackets, I just change the sign of everything in the middle. So that 5x becomes minus 5x. And that 4 becomes minus 4. Over here, I distribute the 2 through. So 2 times 3x is 6x. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Distribute the minus 2 through. So minus 2 times x is minus 2x. Minus 2 times minus 7 is plus 14. First step. Second step, collect the like terms. So here, just on each side of the equation, I'm not moving things to other sides of the equation yet, but I'm you know putting this minus 5x. So again, to remind you, um, this minus follows the 5x. It stays in front of the 5x, so it's there. Uh, the positive in front of the 12 is from there, and that minus 4 carries through as well. Okay, And same thing over here. This minus 2x is from there, and this minus 2 here, and minus 2, I'm not going to draw the line, I'll get too confusing, from here to here though, and um, 14 stays positive, so that stays the same. And just to simplify that, then 5x minus, 15x minus 5x is 10x. 12 minus 4 is 8. 
uh, 6x minus 2x is 4x, and minus 2 plus 14 is plus 12. Got to get good at your integer math. All right, here we go. Here's where we bring all the uh, x terms to one side of the equation, all the just number term, terms to the other side of the equation. So first of all, you know, to get this 4x over here, I subtracted it from both sides of the equation. And that ended up with 6x because 10x minus 4x is 6x. And to get this 8 over to the other side, I subtracted 8 from both sides, leaving with 6x equals 4. And then divide both sides by 6. x then equals 4 over 6. And it is best, if you can, to express your answer in lowest terms. Okay? So there is a couple more examples today, but I'm going to do those ones in class. So you'll see those tomorrow's in class. I'll expect that you'll have this note written down when you get here. And then we'll do these ones um, in class tomorrow. So we'll see you then.